seems to me that you have a, an intuition for talent even before it's realized. Yes, maybe. What do these pictures mean to you, yourself? Oh, they've become more or less the most important part of my life. I can't imagine now living without them. She'd carved out a niche for herself and she filled it and she made it as a collector and as a kind of collector that never quite existed before. She wanted this art as a mirror for her own strangeness. I think sex and art went absolutely hand in hand in her brain. She was talked about as such a slut for doing the same thing that all the men around her were doing. Peggy is a sort of model for the liberated woman. Peggy appealed to me because of her eccentricities. It's just a wonderfully colorful family. The Guggenheims progressed from selling door to door to having these enormous fortunes. You must have been extremely shocked when your father died on the Titanic. Yes. She actually helped artists to leave Europe, to the United States, so she very much saved artists. You could have wound up in a concentration camp. Yes. Yes, I know that. She I managed to put together one of the great collections of modern art for the almost laughable sum of $40,000. Some of these prices are subjective because they're so rare, but you're talking billions, billions of dollars. My father showed with her, my mother showed with her. She was a big part of their lives in 1946, yeah, when I was three. I first met Jackson Pollock when he was working as a carpenter in my uncle's museum. So I rescued him from that. And how do you feel about walking down the ramp at the Guggenheim Museum and seeing your paintings in a completely different environment? Oh, my uncle's garage, yes. Well, it looks like a garage, doesn't it? I think if he saw this now, he'd turn in his grave. I came to Venice, which I'd always adored, which had been my dream city. Did you feel it was a crazy life? Definitely, yes. It was all about art and love.